Hi and welcome to another DT TV. I'm joined here today by James Wilsma and we're going to have a little chat about the dreaded crayfish. Now, hi James. Hello mate. Right, now, crayfish, is it possible to fish effectively a lake that is full of these crayfish? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I think this year was the first year I've really tackled that situation and frying has, has been a great example of a heavily crayfished water and uh, I really just didn't change my tactics at all, kept it to boilie fishing and really just used um, a product that Chris down here sells, which is a shrink tube. And all we do is literally uh, cut a piece off and shrink wrap the bait uh, twice over so you get a fully shrink wrapped uh, hook bait, pierce it a few times um, and then away you go. So it's not that much different to normal bottom boat fishing really in essence. Maybe the rigs are slightly different, a little bit more cruder than what you normally use. Yeah. Um, I think, like we said, when we're doing a pellet take, uh, I've been using some strip tees yeah. and also some cam fusion from Suffix. Uh, they're great products because they've got a really stiff coating. So and this what, is actually quite important, isn't it? Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, if the craze get really bad, which they did in July and August, yeah. what we were doing was literally using a short hook link and not peeling anything back on, on, on the material at all and just using literally like a stiff... So this was for the hair as well. Yes, for that, the hair. The whole as length well. of it was being tied up, so every single component was basically covered by coating. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and then when the craze subsided a little bit, like they have done now, it's September, and the same as when we were fishing in the spring, you can you can pull back a small amount, same as you would normally fish, you know, a combi style rig. Yeah, sure. So yeah, that that's really the basic principle of it, and we can you know we can go through that when we do a demo of how to obviously tie one of these up. All right. Okay. Um, now. We've sort of, you said I'm sitting there, I'm shrink wrapping my baits up, so obviously he's cutting a piece off, dunking it in, into the kettle, yep. hot water, shrinking it down, stabbing a few holes in it, obviously, so we can allow some of the leakage to come out of the bait. Yep. Now, is there some kind of anything you're doing? I mean, are you then adding a flavour onto this? Yeah, or? what I've done before, I should have said before, was that with the hook baits, let's say we were using cold water in the winter and then we progressed onto the end blend, is that I was using the flavours that we have, obviously, within our company and lacing them beforehand the night before, letting them soak it in, and then obviously coming down the lake and then cutting up the hook. So it's like basically, little, get, get yourself a little dip pot, little boiling yep. dip pot, prepare a load of these obviously before you're getting down the lake, yep. get them into your dip. Without so a doubt. You're yep. trying to get some flavour, get into the plastic as well, mm -hmm. get in through your little holes so you can, you're not masking up all the flavour, as so to speak, with these. Uh -huh. right, and, so, and also as well, that, you know, once you got to the summer months, I was putting the DNA in with it as well, so just knocking it all up together creates a nice little glug, a bit more attractions, because obviously once it's shrink-wrapped, the, the flavour's obviously locked in the bait a lot more, the water's not getting into it, so it's yeah. not releasing as quick. So obviously you need that little bit more attraction, so that was the idea with it, and you know the results speak for themselves. Right, excellent. So is there, you're now obviously here fishing this crayfish water, is there anything maybe different you do with your bait application than say you would some of the other normal lakes that you've fished, being knowing that the crayfish are out there having a nibble? Yeah, I think, I mean, in the spring I was literally just fishing boilies non-stop and, and fishing quite tight um, and fishing the hook bait just off the area and really trying to get, if there were crays in the area, get them on the bait, but if there were carp coming in, obviously taking off the surrounding baits. And that worked really well in the spring. And then as we progressed into the yeah. summer, then obviously went with the mass baiting, which is what we explained when we looked at the pellet. And yeah. really, that was the approach I st I've stuck with. And now I'm starting to progress back into just boily fishing again because the right. crayfish seems yeah. to have subsided. It's my first session back, uh, so it's September now. And, you know, the crayfish seem to have dropped down a little bit in terms of obviously attacking you. So so will they, is, is it we sort of drift further into autumn, into winter? Will they, yeah, I think... the activity of the crays get less and less? Yeah, without a doubt. I think their metabolic rate is determined by the water temperature without a shadow of a doubt. And, and Neil yeah. proved that last year when he when he had his big hit in the autumn. And I think the same was what I found out in the spring. They weren't as active, and, and that's what I'm hoping again, October, November, December. So do you think these crayfish are actually costing you fish at times then, do you? Yeah, without a doubt. I've, I've seen occurrences, especially in the shallow water in the summer, where the fish have come in, and you've got a few big crays, and they will spook off of them. So what happens in deeper water where the clarity is not quite as good is debatable. Debatable, yeah. Obviously, yeah. yeah, it'd be interesting to see if someone did an, an underwater footage on it. So, But at the minute, I've, you know, I've not had any real problems. So so this kind of sort of fishing, having your concentrated bait in the area here and then fishing a the hook bait slightly off it yeah. is working because the cray's obviously attracted to the main yeah. baited area. And if the carp do come across it, I mean, I've personally seen some of the size of the crays in here. I mean, 
no big thick. things like this. Like lobsters. Yeah, I can't really see a carp coming in and trying to bully that out of the way. So the hook bait just off the baited area is, yeah, it may seems... well entice the carp to feed there rather than yeah, on the I mean, big I think, baited area. I think there's guys down here that have just gone for the mass bait and fished at a plastic hook bait over something. It definitely works. Yeah. But for me, it's a tactic I've used on other waters. I haven't got crayfish and it's always worked for me. And I've always been one to stick to what I know and it's paid off so you know I'm not I'm not going to change something that's not broken so. absolutely good advice well there we go some great advice from James there it is possible to catch carp from crayfish waters just a little tinkering of your rigs a little bit of your bait application and it's all good right guys now I'm obviously going to type the crayfish rig for you you've just seen me shrink wrap it next step is obviously to type the rig See, keeping it simple still same as most bottom bait rigs using a, preferably a wide gaped hook with an intern point because that's my favourite sort of hook. Peel back your skin for your hair. Taking your shrink wrap bait, what I tend to do is go through the double side so it leaves the single side with the holes in it to, let, to allow leakage. And the reason for that is that the double side gives you that little bit more grip once it's on the hair and stops the uh, crayfish pulling, pushing sorry, the uh, hook bait back up the hair which I've had quite a bit on here. Right so all we do next is take one of the anti crayfish hair stops that we've got. I'm not sure who these are made by but they certainly do the job. Tie a hair up as you would normally do. Try and keep them fairly small because at the end of the day, I'm looking to try and get as much resistance inside the boilie so that the boilie has something to grip onto. So right, the, the hook's already on. On the boilie goes, as you can see. And then all we do is place one of the hair stops through, like so. And what this does, if you look at the boilie, is that these stops are great because what they do is they pull inside the bait. And as you pull inside the bait, it's actually quite tough to do it. And that, the reason for that is the double shrink wrap tubing that's on it. So it gives that little bit more grip. And once these, these hair stops have pulled inside, there's very little outside the boilie for the crayfish to hold on to, which is the reason why obviously I've used them. And all we do then, simply just tie it up as you normally would. So for me, it's a short hair because I like to keep it nice and simple and I don't want the hair wrapping over the hook, which crayfish can do if they keep playing with it. Like so. Nice short rig for me, as you guys know I like to use. Straight through the back of the high. No tubing for me, keep it nice and simple. Short hair. Pull on the bait just to really align that hair down the shank of the hook. And hey presto, one crayfish rig. You can obviously alternate that when the crays are really uh, strong out there and they're eating a lot of bait and they're playing about. You just use a, a sheath skin hook link straight through. But in principle that's what I try and use. Spring, autumn and summer you use the, uh, the link straight the way through. And, and that's about it guys.